by the odor of marijuana mm -hmm. that uh, that I, cu I couldn't breathe. Yeah, it's pretty sticky. Is it like sticking, that at your yeah. concerts? No. Sometimes uh, you smell a lot of marijuana, but... Do you say anything the... to the audience about uh, about drugs during your, during your show? Oh, there's one or two songs that we do that are against drugs. We have one song called Cocaine Decisions, which talks about... Um, uh, cocaine usage among lawyers, doctors, and um, movie people, mm -hmm. and what the net result of that is. But I don't give them a lecture on stage. A lot of times kids will try and hand me a joint, I just throw them, throw them away. Mm -hmm. So you're against all drugs though, cocaine, marijuana, yeah. alcohol? Uh, well, I, I make a distinction um, with alcohol. I'm not a big drinker myself, but um, the thing about drugs is being controlled substances and with specific laws that put you in jail if you've got it it makes you a criminal when you use it you know which gives the government another different type of leverage over you if they catch you they got that extra little zinger that they can use on mm -hmm. you know it just put your freedom in jeopardy aside from what it does to your health and what it does to your mind i believe the government likes to have drugs in the marketplace because it keeps the population in a very usable state you really believe there's some yes. sort of conspiracy? Absolutely. There's no question in my mind that if you follow the pyramid right up to the top, that there's no difference between the people who are importing it and the people who are arresting you for using it. What makes you feel that? Um, would it, does it sound far-fetched to, to uh, talk about uh, using an entire American community for chemical or biological warfare testing? Well, well not, ever, not anymore. You, it well, doesn't sound far-fetched anymore. Well, you know that it's been done. Our yes. own government has decided to use certain American cities to test chemical warfare agents and, and biological warfare agents on American citizens without their knowledge. Just decided to do it because the time was right and the area was right and they did it. And you only find out about it 10, 15 years later, okay? Uh, if, if the government can do that to their people, there's no reason to believe that they're above giving them drugs and collecting money for those drugs being used and having the benefit of the stupefaction of the population as a something thrown in along with it. Except there are a lot of people who feel the same way you do, so they're, they're not going to fall into that plan anyway, if, if indeed your plan would be correct. Let me tell you something. I get asked about drugs so many times. Most times when I do an interview, they always ask me about drugs. And the reason they do is because I'm such an anachronism. I'm probably the last person in, in the United States who doesn't like them and doesn't use them. I mean, you know, you, maybe you're uh, a person who doesn't use them. I don't know. I just don't enjoy them, and I don't like what they do to people. I think there are a lot of people, though, that feel the same way you do. I mean that sincerely. They're definitely the minority. Because today, doctors get wasted. You know, they go out and snort cocaine before they do open heart surgery. It's cool, oh, I hope you know. not. <laughs> or I hope I never get that. Your, your we lawyer have to break, gets wasted. We have to break away. They're getting more. wasted in there. Look at them. But we've been talking about a lot of things that make you angry and a lot of things, a lot of areas where you are very pessimistic. Uh, when we come back, I want to find out if there are any areas where you are optimistic. Okay? Sure. All right. We'll be back right after this. What makes Frank Zappa happy? I, I find out what makes you angry. I find out uh, the things that you don't like about this country or the world or anything else. But what do you like? Where do you have some hope? Optimism. Well, I don't have uh, that much optimism, but th there's a difference between having optimism and having things that you like. True. Um, I like good food when I can find it, but it's getting very difficult to find it. You certainly couldn't tell by your weight that you like good food. <laughs> well, I've been sick. Have you? Yes, I've been. Uh, I've had uh, gastroenteritis for about the last uh, eight or nine days, so I've been living on soup and other nasty things like that so but you're feeling better now yeah i'm recovering you won't catch it it's all right i won't breathe <laughs> no i wasn't afraid of that but you're very very thin and normally people who like food uh, are not very very thin well i like it but i'm not going to just eat anything because it's so hard to find stuff that really is prepared well in other words good ingredients put together uh, with the proper amount of time by somebody who knows the formula who loves to cook and instills in the food their own 
joy of cooking, you know, mm -hmm. so that the finished result is something beautiful to eat. And that's hard to find, you know. True. You can get a good hamburger someplace, but, you know, good food, hard to find. But I like... What else? It makes me happy when I find it. I like good musical performances of anything. And any kind of music? Any kind of music. Anytime um, I hear uh, musicians doing their job right, I feel good. Mm -hmm. And this is also not something that happens all the time. I mean, not musicians yes. don't always perform up to their maximum capability. Um, what else? I like to smoke cigarettes and I like to drink coffee and I like sex and <laughs> other than that Sounds if, I, American. if I find an honest politician someplace I might get a laugh out of that I've uh, seen a couple of people uh, on television who I thought said things that were admirable and I mentioned one to you I said I like John Glenn and I was even enthusiastic about Barry Goldwater when he was uh, you know, doing his little number about the moral majority, which I thought was very courageous of him. Mm -hmm. Even though I couldn't agree with him on everything else that he says, I could appreciate that. And in fact, even went so far as to invite him to our concert when we were in Arizona. But was he able to come? No, he was, uh, I think he was at a ham radio convention that night. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you see, I, I, when somebody does something that I think is positive, I tell them, I let them know. Yes. What about uh, your kids? What well, about their future? Them. Yes, I know you love them. What about their future? What do you hope for them? Well, it seems that my daughter has decided to learn to play the drums. I hope that she keeps up with that because I think the, a good girl drummer would be nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, one of my sons was interested in baseball. He got to be very good at that. Now he's decided to play the guitar. And I would kind of like to have him be a musician if he... You would. Yeah. Sometimes parents don't want their kids to follow in their footsteps because they found, uh, they found it difficult. They don't want their kids to go through those same kind of difficulties. Well, I wouldn't want them to go through the same kind of difficulties either, but what's that got to do with being a guitar player? You know? <laughs> yes. Just the joy of being able to plug it in, turn it up and go mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. you know? He should have that, uh, that fun in his life if he wants it. We're going to have to continue this conversation another time. The time has just flown by and we are completely out of time. I thank you very much, Frank Zappa, for being my guest Thanks this evening. Thanks for letting me come on the show. All right. And thank you for being with us. Good night.